So oftentimes when you're dealing with rate laws, you'll get a problem where the setup will be some type of table giving you a bunch of values. And we're going to try to analyze the kind of problems like that. So in this very simple this very simple description here, um, we're given a table where we're given concentrations and we're given rates of formation. So the basic reaction here is A plus B produces C. And you can see that someone ran three experiments and they used three sets of concentrations that they labeled out and here's concentration of A, concentration of B, and the rate of formation of C. That's specifically the rate. And we are going to answer these questions here. First, what is the rate law? And then we're going to figure out what the order of the reaction is. Now, rate law is always written out as something like rate will be equal to a constant, which is K, times um, concentrations. So like concentration of X, and then the times the concentration of Y. And there's a lot of different values you got to keep in mind when figuring out rate laws. So this basic question, what is the rate law? Well, you want to look at the table and then just kind of quickly break down what you have. We can see we got three sets of concentrations. So in the first two sets, in this first experiment here, concentration of A was 0 0.2, concentration B was 0 0.1, and that produced a rate of 3 times 10 to the negative second, which is just, that's, let's see here, 1, 2, 0, 3, 0 0.03. 0 .03. And uh, in the second experiment, they bumped up the concentration of B to 0 0.2 0 point, um, of A and then 0 0.2 of B, and that gives you And then the third one, they bumped up the concentration of A, and they left concentration B the same as in experiment two, so that wound up giving you the same as experiment number two. So what is the rate law? <clears throat> All right, well, our rate law is going to be rate. It's going to be equal to some type of constant times concentrations of either A or B or possibly both. Now, in this first experiment here, they had 0 0.2 of A, 0 0.1 of B, and they got 0 0.03 for the rate of C, forming C. Now, the main thing is we want to look at the difference between 1 and 2. So in 2, they doubled the amount of B you had, and that effectively doubled the rate. That's really important. That's the key thing there. So they left A the same. They doubled B, and you double the rate. So that's telling you that there is some, a very specific correlation between how much B you have, whatever B may be, and what your rate of formation of for C is. Now in the third experiment, they doubled the amount of A. They left B the same. So they doubled the concentration of A, and you can see that really didn't do anything. So that's telling us that the concentration of A doesn't even matter in this scenario here but the concentration of B is really important. So really your rate law is just, rate is equal to that constant K times concentration of B. And because it only doubled, and th this is one weird thing that's kind of um, a little more difficult to understand, like since it only doubled, it's just K times concentration of B. And we're gonna, in a minute, we'll see other examples where you can have a different values interplayed here. And this, this other question here is, what, are the, what is the order of this reaction here? Well, since there's only one value for that rate, the order of the reaction is just one. That's more importantly because since you, whenever you double B, you just double your rate of formation. That leaves this what we call a, uh, an order of one. The, the, rate, the rate law for this reaction is on is at the overall order of one because we only have B increasing at a order of one. So let's see a little more complicated example. So in this one here it's, it's very similar except we got a couple different values and we got a real reaction here. Um, so for every for 2NO in a gas form when you combine it with uh, bromine, and bromine is a diatomic 
so it's Br2, you produce 2 and OBr. These are all gases. So what's the rate law of this reaction given all these values over here? What's the overall order? And now we're going to try to calculate what K is going to be. So again, just do a little analyzing. All right, so 0 0.02 for NO, 0 0.02 for BR, and then that's in the first experiment, you got 9.6, so that's just 0, 0, 9, 6. In the second experiment, you had a doubling of NO, BR was remain, remain the same, and that gave us 3.8 times 10 to the negative 1. So that's just another way of saying 3.8. And in the third experiment, they went back to the original value that they had in the first experiment for NO, and they uh, doubled the R. So 0 0.02 went to 0 0.04, and that's just 1.9. All right, so first look at what's going on here. When you double an O, what happens? It's not just a doubling here. It's actually a quadrupling. And that's usually what you see. Those are usually your two options when you're looking at rates, these rates of formations for in, in rate law problems. You either see a doubling or a quadrupling. That's the most common, the two most common scenarios. And we're gonna sh I'm gonna show you in a second what that means. But notice here, this is 0 0.098, or 96, excuse me, and if you multiply that times 4, you would get 0 0.38. So looking at uh, experiment 1 versus experiment 2, you double NO, you quadruple your rate of formation of NOBR. So NO is really important in this reaction here. It's very, very important. And for the third experiment here, what they did is they doubled BR. They went back to the original value for NO, so 0 0.02, you double BR, and what happens? All right, you get a different value. In this case, you're actually doubling your rate, and really, we're not gonna compare two and three, we're gonna compare one and three. So comparing one and, experiment one and experiment three, you see that in experiment one, where you have 0, 0 0.0, or yeah, 0 0.02 and 0 0.02 of each and O and BR, if you double BR2, this gives you a doubling of your rate. So this is kind of what we, what we just saw in the last example, is a doubling. But in this case, with experiments one versus experiments two, it's a quadrupling. So this tells us that both NO and BR2 are pretty important to create this NOBR. So what is the rate law? Again, it's gotta be in this format for rate laws. And last time we went A and B. So that's usually the format you always see. So in this case, our rate, so that's the constant. In this case, we got NO. And we know, again, this reaction is dependent on both NO and BR2. So we got to put BR2 also. Now, one very important thing here is that we have to signify, we have to show in some way that when you double NO, you quadruple the rate. That has to be shown. You must show that. And the way we show that is by basically using exponents. In this case, we use exponent of two to show that whenever you double NO, the amount of NO, it's going to quadruple your rate. And you can think of that as, well, before I get to that, and let's look at BR2 real quick. When we double BR2, what happens? You just double the rate. So you don't have to put a two here. We can assume there's a one there, like we did before. So it's just two for NO2, or is it for NO, it's an exponent of two. For BR2, it's an exponent of just one. Now, the reason we put two here and one here is, well, basically, think of it this way. With think, You gotta think of it like in values of like two. So if you, if you take the number two and you would raise it to some power. And in this case, the number two here is going to be our represent our concentration. The exponent will represent what is the rate exponent, and then this number here will be the number for the rate. 
So if you were to double a concentration and you doubled your rate, what power is that to? That's just to the second power. X is just one in that case. So in this case, for BR2, we can make that just one. On the other hand, what if you had, what if you doubled your concentration like we do with NO2 here, or with NO here, we go from two to four, and it actually quadruples your rate. So what's the exponent in that case? In that case, the exponent's gonna be two. So that's why we use this, this two here to, to show that this is a quadrupling. That's why we use a one here to show that's a, a doubling. I hope that helps, because that can be really confusing. The good news is you; these are the only two things you'll ever see. You only have to recognize if it's a quadrupling or a doubling when it comes to rates. It, I've never really seen a tripling or anything like that. So just know if if it's a quadrupling of the rate when you double your concentration of something, that's where you gotta put use a two exponent to represent that. If it's just when you double the concentration, you double the rate, then you just leave it alone. It's just one. Now this next question, what's the overall order? Well, the overall order is just adding up the two orders we have here. So that's just two plus one. This two plus this one. So the overall order for this reaction is three. And lastly, we're gonna calculate the value for this K. That's actually really easy to do. You just use this equation, the rate, you just pick any of these rates, any of these rates of formation. So we'll just go with the first one, 9.6 times 10 to the second power. So that's gonna be our rate here. K is what we're trying to find. And now we need the concentration. So concentration of NO. Well, we can just use the concentration of NO in experiment one, where we're using this rate. So 0 0.02. And since in our equation here, we have it to the second power, that's what we gotta do. And then we do the concentration of BR2. Go to that exact, you gotta stick to the same experiment. So experiment one, use all the values from experiment one. So 0 0.02 for NO, so we gotta use 0 0.02 for BR2. And now you just solve for K. If you solve for K, you should get a value of 12,000. Or for proper scientific notation, 1.2 times 10 to the fourth power. I hope that clears up rate laws a little bit.